we're diving into the juicy gossip of the NHL, where we'll be looking at teammates who just couldn't stand each other. While there is some truly remarkable camaraderie within NHL locker rooms, just because you wear the same uniform doesn't make you best friends. We'll be discussing teammates who absolutely hated each other. Patrick Marlowe and Jeremy Roenick. Jeremy Roenick has rubbed a number of people the wrong way through the course of his lifetime. Patrick Marlowe was one of them. Marlowe and Jeremy Roenick had a well-publicized feud during their time as teammates of San Jose Sharks in the 2000s. The exact reasons for their animosity are not entirely clear, but there are several incidents that may have contributed to their feud. One incident occurred in 2006 when Roenick publicly criticized Marlowe's leadership skills, calling him gutless and spineless in an interview interview with a Bay Area radio station. Roenick was also critical of Marlowe's performance in the playoffs, suggesting that he was not playing to his full potential. Another incident occurred in 2007 during a game against the Detroit Red Wings. Roenick reportedly yelled at Marlowe on the bench, calling him a cancer on the team. This incident was widely reported in the media and further fueled the feud between the two players. There were also reports that Roenick felt Marlowe was not tough enough and did not play with enough intensity. Marlowe, on the other hand, was known for his quiet and reserved demeanor, which didn't jive well with Roenick. Despite their differences, both players have since moved on from the Sharks and have spoken positively about each other in more recent interviews. Eric Lindros and Rod Brindamore Fans of the Flyers will always cherish Rod Brindamore, but you either love Eric Lindros or you can't tolerate the guy. Because of this, Flyers supporters were devastated when Brindamore was traded. The move stems from one of the most divisive rumors in Philadelphia sports history. Brindamore's wife allegedly had an affair with Lindros. What happened next is like something from a movie. Some stories suggest Brindamore attacked Lindros with a folding chair, potentially worsening his concussion issues. Another version suggests Brindamore's teammates took matters into their own hands and beat up Lindros. Another incident occurred during the 1997-98 season when Lindros, who was the team captain, reportedly demanded that Brindamore, who was an alternate captain, be stripped of his leadership role. Lindros was critical of Brindamore's play and felt he was not meeting expectations. It's also been rumored an incident occurred during the 2001 season when Lindros suffered a concussion during a game against the New Jersey Devils. Brindamore reportedly criticized Lindros for not returning to the game, which further strained their relationship. There were also reports that Lindros felt Brindamore was not supportive of him during his numerous injury setbacks, that Brindamore was jealous of Lindros' status as a superstar player. Whatever exactly happened between the two, Brindamore demanded that the team either move Lindros or him right Right away. The Flyers chose to keep Lindros, but he would later suffer several concussions and miss several games. As for Brindamore, he went to the Carolina Hurricanes and would win a Stanley Cup. Scott Hartnell and Jeff Carter. Another set of Flyers teammates, another instance of extramarital affairs. The claim is that Jeff Carter had an affair with Scott Hartnell's wife. However, this has not been verified. Both rejected the allegations and were enraged when the information got out. All this was revealed when the Flyers had lost 11 straight games, being in one of the worst slumps in franchise history. The squad was criticized for their lack of discipline both on and off the ice, which led to the firing of their head coach. Flyers appeared unmotivated and rumors began circulating about a divide within the team. Carter was eventually traded to Columbus, where he was yet again unhappy and later sent to the Los Angeles Kings. P.K. Subban and Brendan Gallagher P.K. Subban's final season with the Canadians, tensions between him and Brendan Gallagher rose as they reportedly clashed during team practices. When Subban was eventually relocated to Nashville, their animosity just grew. We shortly witnessed their first confrontation since Subban arrived in Nashville when Gallagher attacked Pekka Rene, and Subban retaliated. Coming to his goaltender's aid, Subban pulled Gallagher to the ice and held him there until the referees separated the two. During the altercation, Gallagher gave Subban a face wash. After the game, Subban explained that he called Gallagher short and looked over his head while talking to him, which upset him. Subban accepted the face wash and acknowledged that sometimes it's just part of the game. The next game featured another matchup between the two. After losing to Subban and the Preds, Gallagher gave an interview where he expressed his frustration with a focus on Subban. Gallagher stated that Subban tries to make it about himself, but they're focused on their team moving forward. It's clear that Gallagher has a disdain for Subban. 
Subban's active social media presence and larger-than-life personality may cause some people to dislike him, including Gallagher, because of hockey's team-first and lack of individuality culture. Eric Carlson and Mike Hoffman Things got pretty personal between these two, with drama involving Mike Hoffman's girlfriend and Eric Carlson and his wife. Eric Carlson and his wife Melinda went through the heartbreaking experience of losing their child just one month before the expected due date. It's a terrible tragedy that nobody should have to go through. However, things got even worse when Melinda spoke up about online harassment, filed a request for an order of protection against Monica Carrick, Hoffman's girlfriend. According to court documents, Melinda claimed that Monica had several disturbing statements, including wishing harm to her unborn child and even suggesting that someone should hurt Eric to end his hockey career. Unfortunately, things got even worse for Carlson and his wife. Apparently, Monica Carrick, Mike Hoffman's girlfriend, continued to make insensitive remarks and jokes about the loss of their unborn child. Both Mike and Monica have denied these allegations, but it's worth noting that several other wives of Ottawa Senators players supported Melinda's claims. It's no surprise that the tension between Eric Carlson and Mike Hoffman caused a rift in the locker room. They just couldn't play together anymore. Hoffman was eventually traded to the San Jose Sharks and then later dealt to the Florida Panthers. Now he's currently a Montreal Canadian. Meanwhile, Carlson found his way to the Sharks, where he's still playing today in spite of recent trade rumors. Unfortunately, the bad blood between the two players didn't disappear after they were no longer teammates. In fact, Hoffman kept trying to start a fight with Carlson when they faced each other. After the game, Hoffman said he had actually tried to provoke Carlson to fight, but he didn't take the bait. Saku Koivu and Mike Ribeiro from the moment Mike Ribeiro joined the Montreal Canadiens in 2001, both he and Saku Koivu never saw eye to eye. Koivu and Ribeiro were both competing for the number one center spot on the Canadiens during the 2003-2004 season. They began to fight for it, literally. In February 2004, a fight broke out between both players during a morning skate at the Bell Center. This created a separation in the Canadian soccer room and clans were speculated to have been formed. Three years after Ribeiro was traded in an interview with Montreal sports channel RDS, Ribeiro stated that he had never felt like Koivu was respectful towards him and he never felt welcome in the Canadian's locker room. Koivu, on the other hand, apparently never liked Ribeiro because of his me-first attitude. Brendan Shanahan and Craig Janney The Blues dealt two-time 50-goal scoring winger Brendan Shanahan to the Hartford Whalers in exchange for his pronger. It was little known at the time. Many fans were perplexed by the trade. However, there's possibly a bit more to the story. There were rumors it may have had to do with the fact Shanahan was sleeping with teammate Craig Janney's wife. Sadly, the infidelity part is allegedly true. Janney's wife at the time would actually later marry Shanahan. How much, if any, it had to do with the trade is speculation. It seems a bit odd that it would have had that much to do with it since the Blues has already traded Janney at the deadline of the prior season. Could be that Shanahan was a locker room cancer. After his stint with the Blues, there were rumors that he was not the most popular guy in the room with the Detroit Red Wings. What are some tales of teammates hating each other that you've heard? Let us know.